The Nigeria Police Force is notorious. It is rated the most corrupt institution in Nigeria by Transparency International in its 2019 Global Corruption Barometer. The Anti-Cultism Squad and other sister units gain the police force its notoriety. Impunity within the police system is peers reinforced and, 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 and peers uh, uh, structured. Fight of crime has been commercialized to the point where police just see it as a way of making money to raid young people because they cannot understand them, they cannot engage them, and they are intimidated by them. For example, a policeman is already intimidated by looking at your phone. He sees that your phone can pay his gratuity and it automatically labels you a Yahoo boy from there on. So anybody he arrests, he sees as somebody that must be punished for living a life better than he is living because he's carrying a gun. This is a crime and these are crimes that must be punished by the state. But it is not just the police force. It is the old justice system skilled to crush the poor and ordinary Nigerian citizens. A lot more corruption happens within the court system, particularly as you mentioned, the magistrates. One practice that we have found out is that when police arrest people and demand right for bail, and people are either not able to or unwilling to pay, they charge them to court. And when they do, even when it is a bailable offense, because some of these magistrates are corrupt, they work closely with the police. The magistrates usually, when they decide to grant bail, they impose conditions that are too stiff for the See, within the court system itself, especially the magistrate court, which is the closest to us, the, number, the level of rot is, is killing, is destructive, is, it can even lead to revolution overnight. In this documentary, Ban Joda Milola revealed how the police officers, court officials and prison wardens are all complicit in a justice system rigged against the people. Do not do anything. I'm a student. I don't finish student talking. That was really Countless young men are raided from their homes, tortured and extorted by operatives of the anti-courtism squad. Oh, we did not get I did not do anything. Where did they raid you from? Where did they pick you? You see, people were running. They were being happy to the main pitch. I don't finish jogging. I was sweating. Security officer. People don't give. I was the one who was being I came to pay. They used to come to pay my own. This is my issue. Clashes between rival court groups are prevalent in legal states where this investigation was carried out. This necessitated the creation of the anti-courtism unit in the state. The one in Lagos, just like others, was created specifically to address the increasing because Lagos is, is one, one um, state where courtism, you know, youth violence, gang violence is a major challenge. You know, it's a, hot, a hotbed, it's a certain parts of Lagos. So courtism is a problem and the police created the anti-courtism unit to respond to that problem. But whether the anti-courtism unit is doing that work or not is a different question. Today, we do not trust the police because the police in itself are victims within the system because they've been neglected for so long, they are not being taken care of the way they ought to, they don't have enough funds to run or to prosecute their jobs, and now they have decided to take advantage of the gap within the system. The anti-courtism unit at Bagada, a suburb of Lagos State, is dreadful but only to the innocent and those unable to pay for a white slate. Young men who were raided or illegally arrested are detained at the center while their relatives seeking their release are extorted. To do more of um, 
they go outside the law in their operations. They complicate the, the crime situation in the state by harassing young people, extorting, and the, the, the motivation is always to extort money. So you find situations where they raid a, a whole neighborhood, pack young people to, the, to, to, the, to their office, and sometimes even along, along the way to the office, they will ask those who have money to bear themselves to provide, and when they do, they leave them. Those who cannot provide, they take them to the station, they detain them and they ask them to call their relatives to come and bear them. So you find out that in the pretext of fighting crime, they also commit crime. After weeks of undercover reporting outside, Damilola gained access into the station to capture firsthand how the police not only detain citizens in brazen violation to the law, but form a money-making enterprise from the misery of these poor Nigerians. At every turn, there is a policeman demanding bribe for any interaction with those in their custody. The reception in the main building is not any different. A police officer bills visitors before they are allowed to contact the detainees. You, I want to remove from now and I want to stay in Nuru. I want to stay in Nuru. I want to stay in Nuru. We are for one thousand. In fact, we don't wait for time and have people to ask you. Are you relieving them? No. They just want to eat and look for. Okay, well, Yes, so uh, Mr. Dimola to answer. Uh, I'm not going to go out. This police unit arresting people and then holding them hostage because for me it is hostage taking. When you arrest a person and detain the person until the person is able to provide a certain amount of money demanded by the police, that is clearly hostage taking. A senior officer in the unit, Soprojimo, who is popularly referred to as Babalawo, is notorious for extorting huge sums of money from relatives of suspects under him. In July 2019, while Damilola was undercover at the Anticultism Detention Center, Babalawo refused to release Nuruddin Usman on bail, except he was paid 200,000 naira. Usman was a victim of street raids and illegal detention. He was paraded as a courtist by Zuberu Muhazu a former commissioner of police in Lagos State. Mm -hmm. 
When he was paraded, Muazu said Usman and others will face prosecution, but this never happened. Successfully prevented any kind of activity or killing on the 7th of July 2019. 100 couches and gangsters were arrested within this period. We have charged 70 of them to court and 30 are still under investigation. 55-year-old Usman was held in detention for nine days until his family paid Babalao a sum of 70,000 naira. The criminal extortion is not only against the law, it negates what the police force itself wants Nigerians to believe. Any officer collecting bail money is not better than a kidnapper. Yes, it's not better than a kidnapper. Because for me, the difference is that the kidnapper is hiding his victim somewhere where nobody knows. You are hiding your victim in yourself where everybody knows. <laughs> Usman left the police detention after he had paid the ransom of 70,000 naira. To many Nigerians who have been transferred from police detention to prison custody, Usman is a lucky man. Hundreds of Nigerians who could not cough out this huge sum end up in prison. The reason why we see what seems like corrupt acts or illegality within the court system is primarily because of the culture of impunity. People know they can do whatever they want and get away with it without consequences. From the police officers that file frivolous charges, the police prosecutors that file frivolous charges, against people to the court officials, the belly of the, of the courts, the registrar of the courts, I mean those of them that collude with rogue police officers. Baba Jide Olosonde was reported to the police for stealing a bus. He was later charged to court even though the boss was found. His prosecutor, Michael Una, was informed of the development but he failed to put the new information before the judge, Magistrate Fashola. <laughs> One release me on the 21. One day, I want to one bill in the court. To remind us of my two value 1.6 million. One of one bill, bill of one 150 naira, 150,000 naira each person, each sort of value, sort of image. So, why for me, they organize value lawyer. Already, lawyer to want to submit pay lawyer to buy fifty thousand naira. Go to the pay hotel in Wazi court. Then 
But to wa ni won ajo en case yen won de fu wa ni base won wa lawyer wa gbe fun pe won lati lo wa 80000 naira wa pe lo won fi set to awon boya prosecutor boya awon sorti or whatever ko sa so be yen won ni won wa 80000 naira fun ko bill mi ko bill mi mo mo ti bi lo titi to bi di ojo ti court sele gba to dojo to ta ma lo si court oni ti ohun o ba tun ri owo emi 50000 naira bi pe owo ni lo si court o yen yen lawyer yen o lo won ni lo si court o olosande a 62 year old commercial bus driver remained in prison custody for 3 months michael una would not verify the homes of his shorties until he was paid 17000 naira register register but i don't know i register him money and my back 2000. prosecutor una is orderly so coming and the registrars in magistrate fashola's courtroom run an illegal syndicate of extorting helpless defendants Sukomi collected 17,000 naira before he fabricated a lie that was sent to the magistrate for signature. He wrote on all of Sunday's bail bond that he had verified the resident of the shorties, but he did not carry out any verification. What do you tell me? What do you tell me? What do you tell me? I think I have 20,000 there. Go. You can't tell us. Because, say, I got myself. I don't have 17, I carry come. I got to collect 3K from one of them. But when he asked me, I never even collect the ticket. Uh, I give that whole do everything for him. No, see, we go, 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 Thank you, man. Please. Took on me. I let that be the reason. Give them, give them. The registrar in Magistrate Fashola's courtroom also collected 2,000 naira before she handed over a loss on this release order. <laughs> The fear of getting locked up in prison pending a prolonged process of perfecting bail conditions is one of the several reasons many Nigerians succumb to extortion at the police stations. The corrupt policemen know this and milk it to their advantage. When crimes are being perpetrated by cultists or by armed robbers, you will not see these police officers. They will not be, they will not be anywhere near the environment. Years after, months after, weeks after, hours after the crime has been, has been uh, the criminals have gone, they vandalized, they've gone. Innocent souls going to buy bread. Innocent souls going to buy Ewa going will be arrested with the pots in their hands, will be arrested with their slippers and wrapper, will be arrested in their pyjamas as a suspect for a crime that has been committed. If I commit a crime in an area, why will I be carrying plates in the same area to go and buy beans? Do you understand? So these are, these are the things, that's, this is one of the reasons why we're saying policing in the 21st century must be intelligence driven. Dolakwa Agbaje, Usman Ola Meleko and Chima Ogbaeze were locked up in Kirikiri for over a year because they were unable to perfect their bail conditions. 
The three young men were raided and unable to bail themselves from police custody, they were charged to court for theft. There was no shred of evidence against them. No complainant, neither did their IPO appear to testify against them. They were condemned to prison for being poor and vulnerable. When their case was dismissed for lacking diligent prosecution, the young men were overjoyed. The prison wardens, like the police and the judicial officers, also weave an illegal extortion racket around the inmates they were employed to protect. Before the family members were allowed to see Allah Sunday, who had been in prison for three months, the police wardens, led by an officer whose name tag read Gabriel, demanded 3,000 naira. It was almost the close of business when the release order was presented to Warden Gabriel. He refused to receive it until he was paid 5,000 naira. Papa, please, in the name of God, Papa. Who will complete the money in the office? Do you think it's my money? It's not my money. I will not help to collect for office. It's not my money. Mama, she I need to get a lot. Three thousand, you don't Three thousand, you don't pay. Three thousand, you don't pay. Daddy, you See, Papa has been there since February. Papa. This money I collect, I, it's not for me, it's for the office. So if I collect 3,000, who will make it 5,000 naira for the office? For them? It's all right. It's all right now. It's not reasonable. 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 Papa, four, five. Everything we get our hand, don't shape it together. So, thank you. Hey, don't These corrupt activities have made many Nigerians and advocates call for the reform of the whole justice system, while some others want the full implementation of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015. So what we are calling for, what we need, is to have the chief judge, the chief magistrates, championing a regime of transparency and accountability. Mm -hmm. The reason why we see what seems like corrupt acts or illegality within the court system is primarily because of the culture of impunity. People know 
they can do whatever they want and get away with it without consequences from the police officers that file frivolous charges, the police prosecutor that file frivolous charges against people, to the court officials, the belly of the, of the courts, the registrar of the courts, and those of them that collude with rogue police officers to extort defendants, to extort people who are standing trial. They need to be made to understand that there is a price to pay. If we do not have that kind of mindset at the leadership level, there is hardly any reform mechanism that will be put in place that will work.